So we have now in the panelists Daphne Daniel Santos, uh, Patricia Almos Reda, and Raza Abbas, and uh, unfortunately Irena um, Irena Psifidou had to left, but we invite you and the audience to join the stage. Uh, you may just uh, show your interest or by typing an hashtag and your point in the in the uh, keyword in the chat and now oh we are getting on the virtual stage what do you think about the concept of calling or maybe the uh, initiative of hope i i would like to step one step before i don't know if if this is possible but i i must admit i find it really really affected that you have asked previously the parents and the students and the teachers and the companies and normally we have one or two of them ask and and put it on evidence based what you are developing and uh, and put it in a kind of a uh, trans transgressive uh, engagement for a better life at least yeah peaceful life um should i start or yeah, start. Um, I think you are the first. <laughs> I think uh, it's important to understand what is the student's perspective. Uh, oftentimes, you know, in our part of the world, we often uh, say that these are the careers that we have decided for you, and that automatically leads to a dysfunctional um, uh, uh, product. So it's very important. A lot of time when we have these conversations with students and with with the younger generation, it's important to engage them very early. And the reason why I say early is, um, as per uh, various research, it says that when when you have early earlier discussions from grades eight to twelve, that is a time when you are planting a seed of transformation. And if you can um, plant the seed correctly in those four years of transformation, those thirty eight years will be much better. And I've seen this through my own practice that if we do it later it will be much more difficult to impart change. So the sooner we do it, the better it is. And it's very important to involve the educators and the educational systems to make, uh, just recently in Pakistan, I would like to share that we are having a universal uh, curriculum. So I just shared my input that, you know, it's good to have a universal curriculum for various careers. It's important to integrate careers in that universal curriculum as well. And that is very important to ensure that careers is not nice to have, it is imperative to have. And that is very important. And once we have that, and as I mentioned uh, earlier as well, that legislative uh, policies are important to ensure career calling. So it's not just a one-off or various initiatives that are done, but it's, it's, it's a sustainable process of uh, policies that are integrated in the national framework and in the educational policies. If I just have a little word, then switch to the next. Uh, yeah, I give you, uh, I, I will unterstützen, uh, um, I will su support your opinion. In Germany, we have more younger tendencies to start with uh, career guidance and orientation and to put it in every, uh, every step you have at education system, this uh, is the same in Germany. And I would ask you uh, what you call calling. It could be also identity or uh, identification. Having identity for your job you're going to have, you want to have, you want to fulfill. Um, you calling, in our, um, calling in our context, that's a good question. Calling in our context is uh, a giving that younger uh, lot the opportunity to share what their interests are, to share what their aptitude is, to, sh to give them that opportunity to, to probe about them, to probe about their self-esteem, what ignites them as a human being, what motivates them, what triggers their thought. So to have that discussion and that will automatically lead to calling. So calling without engagement is dysfunctional. So you have to engage them to ensure that calling is integrated in their in their personalities. It's not just a one-off thing and then 
you you just leave them all 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 on their own to figure it out so you have to engage them okay who wants next i saw michaela may i comment on this because um we are, you know, this was one of our questions. Is this this uh, Western concept of individual self actualization? Is this valid, and can we uh, can we export it, so to speak? But uh, hearing you say that uh, calling, and this has some spiritual elements also. It's not only self actualization. It's like vocation, calling, and we find that in many places, and apparently also in, in the southern world. In the global south, um, calling and engagement um, is important, and meaning, having people, giving people the chance to put meaning in their lives, and this is exactly what Emat this morning referred to as values. Why we, when we were searching for individual sets of work values, so what drives people or what aspects of the world they want to. Um, make their skills support uh, to but okay here we do not have a difference between the western world and the southern world we have maybe a difference in when you say you need leg you need legislation because in the ethical code of conduct of a counselors there is this eth ethical principle and it's legally protected that he or she is to and must um support the client to achieve his or her goals. Mm -hmm. And so in this way, it's protected in the ethical code of um, counselors. And th this is maybe what makes this profession so special and the relation so special to the clients. Okay, no big difference here, at least. I, as, oh. I can't see any, at least. Um. I think that we have to take into account the need of a comprehensive model or ecological model. That is, in this process of guidance and counseling, uh, we, all of us, have to work on. That is, not only, for example, the uh, professionals on guidance and counseling, also the teachers, also the families, as, as, as the, the, the parents are very important, for example, also the students. And many times you have the problem that, for example, when you address to or to ask to, for example, teachers, they say that we don't know how to act eh, or how to mm, become a, a tutor or a mentor. Yes. And for example, another important thing is we don't know how to work with the families. Yes. And many times you have to take into our mind that eh, this is a, a process in which we all have been involved. And we all have to work on this. For example, in Spain, in the in the official curriculum, okay, the guidance process is considered. That is, uh, if you go to the curriculum, the national curriculum, the official curriculum, okay, you go to uh, to to primary education, to secondary education at the university, and you can see uh, see there that there are more uh, things about the guidance processes, the orientation and tutorial action, yes. But when you go to the real educational context, also or to the real professional or work context, the the situation is we don't know how to work on this uh, on this way or how to implement uh, correct guidance uh, processes and how to implement or or do this counseling process. So I think that uh, we have to consider this situation and be uh, aware uh, about this uh, this reality, no? I don't know if you is the same in your countries or in Germany, in Pakistan, etc. But I, I I feel and with the, the the research that we are working on, we identify this kind of thing. You mean there's a lack of uh, of guidance persons yeah. trained, yeah. You know, proper trained I, and I able. Yes, I think that the lack of training in on on this uh, guidance area. Yes, not only we we have uh, guidance professionals on guidance, but how the teachers becomes really a, a, a counselor, or for example, yes, the, the teacher says we don't know how to do how to do how to do it or how to do this. We 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 have lack of training in this way. 
So this goes a bit back to the first input from Imad. Maybe he wants to join us in in the in the stage. Uh, uh, how to to define the role and uh, and and to become a counselor and to know to be open enough to engage the people uh, to find their own. Uh, uh, their own pathway. Uh, second or first success for the f factor of uh, Moab, Daniel, was eye level communication. Is this not the basic for for finding out what is the what the purple wants? What is really the mandate you have or they have? Yeah. What do you think? Um, if I may um, add, I mean, uh, okay, respond. Mad. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I think um, one of the um, major skills it, that helps um, uh, practitioners uh, to in, to be more engaged and welcoming, uh, to be more open-minded to listen, it, it is the is the counseling skills. And counseling skills uh, comes also from the um, code of ethics that uh, Michaela mentioned here regarding to respect the objective of the clients, the students, the young man. It's not about dictating them or convincing them to do something. So we need to um, make sure that uh, those practitioners, counselors, they are not promoting uh, something. They are not really recruiting the young people to certain um, uh, um, uh, jobs or training opportunities. No, they, they should be uh, very well um, committed to the client's objectives. This is one core thing. And what makes them do so is to listen much. And as much as they listen to the um, young people, and look to them as comprehensive dynamic systems, not only uh, one aspect should be considered, which is um, only find a job or only build a career, but um, look also to uh, com look comprehensively to the situation of the person, not only the self, but also the supporting systems around them. So th th those kind of you know, uh, key words that might help uh, um, and create good counselors to provide quality services for the client somehow. And of course, being passionate, being uh, serving a love, as I mentioned, is, is important. Yeah, thank you, Imad. Maybe you can switch your camera on because uh, I know how you look like, but it would be nicer to see you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So stepping further to eye level communication, or oh, what's this point? Or have we any difference? <laughs> Is this a crucial question? <laughs> have we any differences? <laughs> you have the word. Um, maybe there's not much uh, of a difference here, but uh, in this sense that we are, I think we agree that services need to be client centered and that um, the counselor or guidance practitioner needs to understand the situation of the client well. Uh, I think it was Nadine and, and, and Edona who said they, how much yeah. time they, it took them to listen and, and what environment they had to have in place to make the people speak up and out. And um, very often it is uh, talking to a person that you relate to, that you trust to, that makes yourself talk and make yourself hear what you say so you, you can understand yourself a bit better. The one thing maybe that, that can be different or that's important for us to understand is that the situation of people can be very, very different. So like in uh, what Rasa said, that the, what the, the importance of the family the, the the crucial role of families in uh, career guides. I mean, actually, Patricia said this too, and how much they try to reach out to parents. But for in you know, have grown up in a world in a Western world where you have social insurance systems, uh, where you have a stable labor market, where you grow up with the idea of only you know you need to be 
have some grit and bit and you'll manage your life and this the the situation of a migrant for example can be entirely different um yeah so the understanding aspects the listening aspects is getting end maybe be as uh, dania said the the um the asset of being a diverse team bring about that you are that you know how fragile realities are and how fragile communication is so exchanging words even if you are a, a mother tongue speaker or a um, you know a proficient speaker of a language does not necessarily create understanding the the this this experience of being in a different cultural background can be also subculture it does not need to be southern or western it can be this type of a family and the other type of a family so that understanding um, the communication skills are important because we know often that our understanding our communication does not or fails unless by accident it's not easy to to create mutual understanding it's an art yeah is there any difference uh, between the younger generation because we were talking about young people or and the uh, more age people or the diverse people coming to Moab to be uh, counseled? Uh, is the, I would assume the question is directed to me. Yes, it um, is. Yes, uh, yeah. Um, there is a, a big difference, obviously, regarding the perspectives. Uh, sometimes you get um, an older person over 60 that still wants to uh, do something with their lives uh, professionally. And uh, so uh, the limitations are obviously very, um, very, very uh, strict, very strong. And um, a, a younger person has more um, room for uh, going on, taking another career. So uh, the age uh, group is, yeah, the, these age differences are very important. And um, yeah, and, um, another um, uh, fact that um, maybe relates a little with this uh, is um, the, prof are the professions that are related to the country, right? Like, for example, um, a lawyer. Uh, lawyers are a very difficult situation because um, lawyers are used to have such a high status in their uh, home countries, and then they arrive in Germany and uh, can't, you know, law, German law is different. So they, they're like in a situation where they have to complete rethink where they are and uh, where gonna, are they going to do. And most of them are in this uh, age group that we referred where there is uh, room for change, but not so much as uh, the youngsters and not so much. And, and a lot more than the older people. Yeah. I may I may add also. I think generation um, aspects here is important because um, if we look, for example, the age of a counselor and the age of a counselee, yeah. they are also different. Huh? You talk maybe about Generation Z and gen Generation uh, Y or so. And a lot of things that we hear from the counselees that it's somehow different than our generations uh, think, exactly. right? Yeah. So yeah. this should be also uh, considered and uh, counselors should train themselves and practice well also to respect this. Uh, gig mm -hmm. economy is, is booming around the younger generations, which is yeah. against yeah. our work value somehow. So we need to consider this as well. Nice question, Sabina. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I think of uh, Corona again and uh, the effect that we had all to learn coping with this uh, online meetings and learning from distance and counseling in distance. And oh. I think uh, most teacher were irritated because the younger people, their pupils, they could manage it easily they they could even they could even find uh, different steps of what wanted doing in the meeting and and uh, and it was kind of uh, getting the other way around between uh, the generations and and uh, this made me think what you said Daniel if somebody in the age of sixty and a lawyer from from his country known is coming. 
you have the other way around the the problem of authority maybe i don't know it's uh, uh, it's really uh, really sensible to get but i would refer i would like to refer to the the uh, the point that Raza made, uh, parents have traditions or traditional pictures, mostly young people in Germany have also traditional pictures. Well, they all want to be YouTube stars, but uh, when it comes to counseling or career guidance, there are maybe five professions they like to be. It's, uh, it's not so uh, creative. Even we have a really good career guidance system actually in our state here. Yeah. And uh, and uh, the point that you uh, reported rather was to get them open to other pathways, but giving them a reason why this is necessary. And uh, if I think this is important because I can retransmit it to what uh, is counseling in Quap. If you are in the project and you are already in TWET and you have problems, often it's a point be open and uh, and um, withdraw maybe your decisions you made to reorientate uh, in which path you go further on to in in order to find your real calling and vocation or what makes you really uh, engage to do it for maybe five years I don't think lifetime 30 years one job it's not uh, normal but uh, longer than just two years yeah what do you think about this? I think as um, uh, Imad mentioned and, and as Misha mentioned as well, I think the art of communication is very imperative here, not just as counselors, but as counselors. And it's important that we are we are um, interacting with, with a different generation and not just communication, but mindful communication. I think that is that is the key word here. And when we do mindful communication, that automatically ignites and promotes meaningful dialogue. So communication can be assertive, com communication can be anything. But if we, uh, one of the things when I started this uh, work on parental guidance, on a lighter note, uh, a lot of my colleagues said that, you know, parents in Pakistan are chief justice. Um, um, uh, have, it's, it's very difficult to penetrate their minds. And I said, you know, respect is a universal value, as uh, Imad mentioned earlier in his uh, talk. And if we provide respect with care and with empathy, even the toughest minds of the world can defrost. So I think it's important to be when, when we when we are doing this work of of careers, the art of mindful communication mm. will automatically give them things to open up, and that will be the entry point, as we often say in our in our development developmental work practice. Mm. Um. I, I think that it's quite important, this communication process. I, I think this is a key factor uh, in this guidance, uh, guidance and counseling. For example, I remember that when we asked to the teachers, leaders of the schools, and also the students in, our, in the framework of your research or of our research, uh, we asked what is the most difficult thing that uh, you, uh, you have in order to implement these guidance processes. And teachers say, we don't know how to ask our students and students say uh, many times the teachers they don't understand us and they don't know how to uh, how to communicate with us so in this case what we can do in order to uh, answer or to give a response to the situation no and many times they say uh, students the young people say uh, yes we are young people but uh, we need a, an adult reference that is uh, we are from other generations yes but we need this reference, this adult uh, member, this adult figure, in order to guide us uh, and to achieve our aims or, uh, or goals or objectives, okay? So, for example, the peer tutoring, that is, okay, I have a colleague, a young people that tutor another young people, yes, or your person, but in this case, say that, but we need another reference. We need a, a, another person that uh, say yes if we are in the right uh, pathway or not. Yes. So I think that in this case is quite important this intergeneration communication. And for example, the corona situation um, increased the risk of the isolation of many of the young people 
And I think that it is quite important to take into consideration that is okay, young people need young people, yes, but young people also need other, other reference, other generation in order to guide them and in order to uh, say, okay, you, you are going to, to achieve in this way or you can go by this way, uh, by this path, whether or not, this is my personal opinion and also the, the feelings and impressions that many of the teacher students uh, that are involved in, of, uh, in our research uh, said uh, us. I don't know if you agree with this or not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and the, the question is, needs it to be an adult refer, uh, referent or is it enough to be an external referent? Uh, what is about peer learning? Well, and I agree isolation was a big point and you learned also from this learning or even counseling has to be face to face if you don't see yourself in real it's difficult coming to this uh, soft skills you need to develop uh, and to open somebody i would like now to invite everybody in the room to step on the stage uh, and maybe Idona Krachmari and Nina Becker are still here and have anything to say or some colleagues uh, i don't know it's easy you just put a note in the chat and then our technical support will give you uh, the possibility to come on the screen so we see you and you have your your own opinions to point in the discussion. This surely will need a bit of time <laughs> for the first. So we have still our panelists in the round. I could go on discussing with Patricia. <laughs> well, we have this problem with intergeneration uh, uh, communication, but it's also uh, um, the, uh, could you translate me please, Michaela? Abgleich von Selbst und Fremdbild. The picture you have from yourself and um, yeah, self and foreign assessment and the gap between how you see yourself and how other people see you, the blind spot. It's kind of a reflection function or mm -hmm. a reflection social mirror, yeah, which is very important for everybody in the counseling system, even if they are older ones, I think. Yeah. I think, I don't know if I understand a little, a little well this situation, but I think, for example, the self-perception of the person, okay, is construct about how the others uh, see me, yeah, or what is the perception that the other people have about me, yes? So this is quite important in order to take also into consideration, especially when we are working with young people, specifically uh, in, in the ages between 12, and uh, 18 years old, 21 years old, because they make their own self perceptions about the perceptions of the other ones. So if they don't have good reference, it's quite it's sure that they are not going to uh, go by correct pathways. So in this case, they need a correct uh, guidance also, not only others uh, guidance, also a uh, peers guidance yes I, I i think so and this is quite important and here i think that the families have a key uh, role in this process but specifically the role of the families is quite too difficult to work on because young people goes to the educational context okay and in educational context teachers counselors uh, leaderships etc can work with the young people on the educational context, on the school, yes, on the on the high school, for example. But these young people then go outside these schools. They go to the community. They go to their family context. What is the reference in this community and in this family context? How this reference in the community and the family context could work as a counselors, yes, 
And this is, I think that this is the one of the keys and the most uh, difficult uh, thing or factor to work on. I don't know, Rasa, you say the family and the family is quite difficult to work with the families. I don't know in the other context, but in Spain, it's, it's impossible. And the family is quite important here, but I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I'll just make some um, make uh, a lighter note on how to um, in, um, make much more um, complex things much more simpler. So in our in our culture, we have various communities, various ethnic communities within the family. So the way I did this parental career guidance work that we have communities association, and they have like uh, masses of people. So instead of uh, approaching single families per se, you contact various community mobilizers that are in charge of a X number of family. And that's how you, you do much, that's how you do evidence transformation work. Um, you mentioned, uh, Patricia, something very interesting about reference. When we are uh, talking with the younger generation, they have their, it's important to have this circle of influence. And that circle of influence involves counselors. That is very important to modify their their um, their um, their frame of mind, and if that if the counselors are not there, we need to ensure proactively that we are in their circle of influence between the ages of 12 to 19, as you rightly said, and that will automatically make the intergenerational communication much more viable and much more futuristic. But that's a great point. If I may share an experience here, um, when we developed the curriculum, I, I was talking about one of the activities was um, asking the students to ask their parents what are what they are good at, what is good about them. And when the students went to their parents and says, hey, dad, mom, what is good about me? It was really a chalk like, huh? Uh, 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 we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really something and um, you cannot imagine um, because we were really persistent like keep asking to get something good about you go to your parent go your uncle go your cousin go to whomever who knows you will who knows you will and get something good about you and when we ask them to go again to the to their friends and collected the goods the good qualities about them you cannot imagine how was really um, re, um, impacted their self esteem and you can easily catch this when you see the, their eyes are really brightening because they found out they are really good ones they have uh, a lot of positive things they have a lot of strengths which which they were really um, um, don't believe uh, about themselves uh, in that regard. So it has its impact about the self-esteem and having the energy to move uh, and accept the challenges in the world of work. I think I would have a question as well. Um, for all three of you, uh, Emma, Reza, um, um, yeah. And Patricia, sorry. Um, regarding uh, the, the technological revolution that we are living, uh, we've been discussing it uh, indirectly, right? Uh, uh, Raza, you took the word futuristic in your mouth, and uh, this is one of the the biggest topics uh, coming next up next, especially concerning career guidance, because professions are dying every day. Uh, they are being created every day. They are being reborn sometimes, and uh, and, and, and because of this gap, I think generations have never been so far apart, right, uh, as they are right now. And um, yeah, try to explain to a grandma what TikTok is. <laughs> it's really hard. So it's like, um, how, how are you feeling at this uh, technological uh, challenges and changes in your work? And how you, have you been considering this? probably upcoming structural unemployment because of technology, right? Robots, uh, AI, whatever, uh, digitalization, right? Um, how is it um, yeah, important to your work? That's a good question, uh, Daniel. I think um, this whole pandemic has taught us that technology and digitalization 
yes, we have to embrace it. We cannot deny it, number one. So for the, the first rule of change management is you accept, right? And you create urgency. So um, it's, it's important as, as counselors that we need to integrate technology in our practice. And that's very, I mean, this is a perfect example of digitalization, right? We are in different contexts of the world and we are, yeah. we are talking. That, that's, that's, a, that's like values in action. So it's important that when we are, when we are talking with uh, clients and when we are talking with people, uh, we, we need to not be afraid of technology, but actually learn it and take baby steps. I know technology, is, it's a notion. I mean, I don't, we don't want to be AI robots, but at least we can be cobots. <laughs> I just learned this word recently. So it's important to uh, whatever we can do and whatever baby steps we can do to learn technology. So, and that will automatically lead to, again, integration with the, with the younger generation. Because, I mean, I when I talk to my kids, they are so advanced in all these social media gadgets. I'm just trying to get the, the basics of LinkedIn. But um, all these social media technologies and all these ICT technologies, they are so advanced. So whatever is more relevant to your practice, embrace it and spread it, as Imad mentioned in his presentation, that uh, multiply it, multiply technology as well with your practice. I like the word baby steps. <laughs> it yeah. reminds me of several people I know. <laughs> and uh, me myself. <laughs> uh, really good. So we have uh, we have the career guidance day to do for next uh, and uh, maybe uh, integrate technology. It's a it's a topic in in my project also and it's really challenging how much we need or not need or do the counselor like to do this or not. Uh, but I won't. Uh, I will give uh, the word to uh, Patricia and Imad if you want to state uh, what uh, you asked, Daniel. Patricia. Yes. Uh, if you, if you wish to start. No, no, start. Do you please? Uh, okay, um, I think originally, whatever online approaches is tend to be a supportive approach for the uh, physical face to face um, approaches. And now it seems that we, we are going to be forced to consider it as um, uh, an approach itself, not an, a supporting approach. And and this puts a lot of lot of um, uh, pressure uh, on the counselors and, and the institutions because uh, I mean um, online tools online approaches is 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 difficult maybe to uh, control difficult to make sure that they are really um, um, uh, um, original tools authenticated um, um, uh, trusted. Um, and again, um, when you deal with some with somebody uh, through a machine, this is also somehow, um, yeah. As Raza said, we we need to to consider this as a learning journey that we need to go through, and also help the uh, counselee to learn how to judge. Uh, such tools, uh, if if they use it as a source of information and so on, because a lot of lot of information, for example, is maybe misleading, maybe uh, not really accurate, maybe not updated. Um, so this is this is really a um, um, a difficult uh, assignment to be done to make sure that um, such digital tools online tools, whatever, uh, name it, need to be somehow um, consolidated in a way. Yeah, more of a lifelong yeah. learning journey, I think. <laughs> yeah. So you want to add something, Patricia? Do we... well, I, I agree with Amanda about the, the opinion. Uh, but I think that here we have uh, an important uh, issue is the, the digital competence. And it's a key competence that we are working about the digital competence that is, uh, okay, how we understand this digital competence. Uh, for me, the media, the online uh, way is, uh, uh, as Oman said, a tool. That is, we have to use these tools, but the, the problem is how we are going to use these tools, yes? 
when we uh, talk about this, this uh, intergenerational uh, uh, communication many times, I was thinking about maybe we have to work uh, in line of a build or create a networking of uh, guidance influencers, as in fact, uh, Misha say influencers, because specifically in young people, for example, this, uh, this media, this social media, this uh, figure of the influencers is quite important, no? So why we don't work in this way? Maybe we have uh, built a network of guidance influencers, but good influencers, no? And we are involved in this uh, digital competence, no? And I don't know, I don't know. If, what do you think about it? <laughs> I was, my mind goes. <laughs> this afterwards yeah. to my children, they're going to laugh at me. <laughs> You'll never be an influencer. <laughs> no, it's just a joke. I would like to invite somebody to step in the stage. I don't know if, uh, if we are talking so much that nobody uh, try or think. But we have no question and no one is brave enough to come in this way. We can help with translations also. So, so. This is also an online uh, phenomenon. <laughs> 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 Okay, what do you think, Michaela? Are we at the end of the debate? Do we have mm -hmm. an answer to our everyone golden standard in the world of career guidance? We have been so many times same opinion and nobody disagrees. <coughs> think. Are we ready with the discussion or is this just a little stop for the next one too? So if no one from the audience is uh, uh, is, is asking why we how we understand digital competence, define it. Yes. So my my um um, um my my had uh, two uh, observations. You know, uh, we talked about the career um, guidance influencers, and I think we are in this social media era where people are. One of the one of the challenges of social media is that we don't know how much information is accurate and people are just opening the mics and they are just speaking um, which is a big ethical challenge for our profession so i think it's important that you know when we have some such, such competent and enlightened people on this panel use social media to maybe start a youtube channel and i'll, I'll just like to share my example i was fortunate uh, to start a uh, youtube channel last year and where I started career conversations. And I said, you know, uh, and I, I interviewed various uh, um, enlightened uh, scholars and practitioners from all around the globe. Um, and just to have a career conversation. And I think as a careers community, we tend to be quite, uh, quite uh, non-visible on social media. Uh, uh, and interestingly, our work is contributing to sustainable development goals. So that automatically leads to digital competence that, you know, as experts, as practitioners, as scholars, we need to increase our social media presence so people actually know what is happening on the ground. So that uh, that is my uh, takeaway from, from Daniel's uh, question, that um, uh, instead of uh, a lot of people are busy on TikTok, but we are, we are doing our own um, uh, guidance TikTok, you know. <laughs> 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 very good, very good. <laughs> so we have to dance now. Okay. <laughs> so we have the recording. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. Uh, and maybe I'm just too traditional <laughs> to be up to your scale. So. We have the career guidance day to do. We have to go on to social media and YouTube, and we have maybe to talk again and to develop more. 
I would like to do the conclusions. What do you think? You have the last word. If you want, every one of you have maybe a last statement, if you like to. Um, I maybe I would like to just say that uh, it was for me. Um, this is the first time that I'm uh, doing uh, something like that since I I started uh, the career as a counselor. Um, I had been a teacher before, but uh, uh, counseling was a big step. It's a, a lot of challenges uh, to get the expertise and uh, you know completely different situations. And it's been uh, really good uh, to have um, insight into other cultures. And for example, I thought it fascinating how um, parental career guidance also is also a thing, and how important to you know to to regard cultural aspects in this uh, development of young people and how to guide them. I, I thought it was all very, very interesting, very insightful. I hope to have uh, taken many, I think, no, I'm sure I have taken many things out of this discussion. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. I think that, for example, uh, in my opinion, uh, we need guidance processes, okay? Um, and we need to uh, make uh, guidance in all the actions that we are doing every day in our daily life, especially, specifically when we are um, working with young people in this, in this way. So I think that uh, it's quite important that we consider this. We have to make a formal guidance process, but also an informal guidance process. Thank you, Patricia. Who wants oh, please go ahead. Yeah. Do you want to make a last statement, Raza? No. Yeah, I was waiting for Brother Imad. Um, ah, I, sorry. First Imad. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for that. Well, actually, I'm I'm really um delighted because a lot of uh, good ideas has been actually uh, presented here in the um, in the session um, and I think I agree with Patricia um, that we yeah we need we need to uh, and also with Raza and all, all of our uh, the, all the team it seems that we need to do more uh, to be more influencing um, into the topic and uh, be more visible to make sure that principles of career guidance is really uh, lived somehow in our uh, in our daily lives, um, not only to be considered as a, a as a job or a career, but rather um, um, use it in, in in the in the during our daily lives. Um, having uh, such ideas like uh, pay guidance day or um, being present in the digital media I think it's also um, topics need to be discussed well and um, to 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 weigh it and see how much is much influencing it is yeah thank you so much very nice ideas Raza thank you <laughs>